What does error code E123 mean? Or error code C123? What does it mean? How do you take apart this wall mount air handler? Diagnose and troubleshoot what's wrong? And how do you repair when you have an error code E123? You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, let's get started. Error code E123 means indoor heat exchanger out temperature sensor error. It means the sensor is either open or shorted. And we have a few sensors right here connected to this Molex plug. And this is a part that I ordered. And you can order parts by downloading a exploded parts view using your model and serial number of your unit on Samsung HVAC downloads. You go under technical documents, type in your model number, and then you can get the exploded parts view for the indoor unit. So I've got this plug connected to three sensors. Two of these sensors are for the indoor heat exchanger, which is the indoor coil. And then the third sensor here is for the air. This measures the air temperature. One of these sensors is shorted, and I'm gonna show you how to measure these temperature sensors and I've got a resistance chart that I read and I'm able to verify if the sensor is reading in range or out of range or if it's open or shorted. This right here is the bag that the sensors came in and the part description is sensor temp 10 kilo ohm and we've got a part number which is a DB3200277A. That right there is the part number and this is the part. Let's take apart the unit. First thing we need to do before we take the unit apart, turn the breaker off. Now we're going to take the unit apart. These Samsung units are pretty easy to take apart. We've got the bottom panel, this top panel, and then we've got one more panel here and we've got two screws right here. So I'm going to get my Phillips screwdriver and take each one of these screws loose, one on the left side, one on the right side, and then filter of course has got to come out. But now I'm able to take this whole entire cover off, fascia cover. Most wall mount units, you can take them apart with a Phillips screwdriver or a Phillips and a flathead. With these new Samsung units, all you need is a Phillips screwdriver and we only had two screws. I love these units. This one's a Quantum series unit and you can already see the sensors. I'm going to show you those sensors. But first, to get to the Molex plug, just take off this cover to the electrical. Here is the Molex plug that attaches to the board. These are the sensors and the two coil sensors, the blue wire and the red wire right here. And then we've got a metal clip that holds each sensor to the actual piping uh, for the coil. And then right here on the side, we've got our ambient sensor. You see that? Now on some mini splits and some of these models of Samsung units, the sensor is right here but on these, it's located right here. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna take this plug off of the board. It's really easy to take this plug off of the board. I'm just gonna take it out like that. This little assembly is also connected to the display. So you have to disconnect the plug that's connected to the display to be able to change this assembly. So here's the display, I've disconnected that. Now we're going to measure the resistance of the sensors and we're going to figure out which one is bad using our meter. So the first thing you're going to do, take your meter, turn it to ohms, make sure you have some micro leads that way you can actually insert the end of the lead into the Molex plug. These are the set of old sensors that we were taking out and what we're going to do is we're going to measure the red, the blue and the black. So first things first, insert the meter leads on each one of the red wires. And that's a coil sensor. What's it say? 0.7. Okay. So this is a 10 kilo ohm sensor. Now we're going to go to the blue. All right. What's it say? 10. That's better. Now we're going to go to the air sensor, which is the black wires. 
the two black wires. What's it say? 10, right? So we had 10, 10, and then the first one we read was 0.7, right? See that? So what? which one's bad? This one right here, right? That one's bad. Now, these are the new sensors. Let's measure the resistance of these three and see if we can get a good consistent reading. What do we got? 10. Blue one next. What do we got? 10. Black, which is the air sensor. What do we got? 10. All right, so these are good. And as far as this one, this one was bad, reading 0.7. Now I've got some sensor charts. If you don't have any sensor charts that you can use to be able to diagnose and look at the range and the temperature, I can send those to you. All you gotta do is be a level one member. I'll give you my email. If you click the join button, become a member, I'll send you a bunch of guides, including my sensor charts. Now let's install the new set of sensors. If your sensor goes out and you want a temporary fix while you're waiting on the part, you can install a generic sensor. If you don't know how to install a generic sensor, I've got a video on installing generic sensors and I'll put it down in the link down below in the description for you so you can learn how so that you can have some air conditioning while you're waiting for your part. Now I'm going to install the new sensors. It's really easy. Just put that one there. Put this one here. Super simple. Now the cool sensors are installed. And then we just put this in here and then route the wire. Air sensors in place. We've got the display located right here. This just pops in. Coil sensors. And we've got it plugged in. Now I'm going to put it back together. So simple. I love the new designs for the Quantum and the Wind Free. Absolutely easy to service because you need minimal tools to take this Samsung unit apart. So that makes me happy. Also, you can download the service manual for any indoor unit that Samsung makes on samsunghvacdownloads.com and they give you a breakdown, step one to step done on how to take apart their indoor units and their outdoor units. Filter. If you don't know how to clean a mini split, if you don't know how to size a mini split, I've got a bunch of videos for you. I'll put them down below so you can learn how. Breaker back on. Unit back on. All right. If you don't know how to work on mini splits, I've got a video on how to work on mini splits and I'll put that down below for you to learn. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe and smash that bell. Ding! so you know what I'm doing. If you want more videos like this, I've got a playlist called HVAC Tips for Technicians. Go check it out. I've got over 500 videos of live in the field experience as an HVAC technician so you can learn and be a better technician. If you got any questions, put those questions down below because questions can lead to content, but if you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are and let me know where you're from. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.